I have got sweat dripping down my back. <laughs> hey, 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 everybody. It is Peter and Sal here from Strong Healthy Women. Welcome to Talking Wellbeing TV, where we share hints, tips, and advice about the foundations of wellbeing. Move, eat, live. And we are officially moving into December tomorrow. So we thought we might start off by talking about surviving the silly season and tips that we can give you around having a healthy holiday. But firstly, I wanted to talk about the, the holiday season. So for many people, they get super, super excited that it's Christmas, Sally Ann. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> She's already decorated and ready to go. Um, whereas other people just absolutely quiver at the thought of it. And that can be for a lot of reasons. But for a number of us, we might be going into that holiday season, that Christmas season alone, as an example. And we... Yeah, especially this year. Yeah, totally, totally. And so I, I wanted to talk about a, a story that is totally personal to me. And it is when I first got divorced, my very, very first Christmas, my sons were going to their respective wives' places, which put me in a situation. My mum and dad weren't here. They were somewhere else. And it put me in a situation where I was going to be alone. And I thought I'd be okay. Wasn't, I, I just went, look, really, Christmas is a day and it is just a day. So thought it, I'd be fine with it. But what actually happened was I started to feel like very, very mopey and very sad for myself but I didn't I, you know I just laid around in bed and then eventually you know the sun was coming through the window and it was a bit hot and I'm looking at the sunshine in it and it was basically calling me outside so I, I did I, I went out for a bit of a walk um, I happened to come across um, some friends that I knew um, they're Italian and um, they asked me what I was doing for Christmas and I said you know I'm you know, I was I was on my own, blah, 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 blah. Well, that was the end of that. They weren't having any piece of that um, and quickly, quickly invited me to their very big Italian Christmas party. And, look, I had a fantastic time just, you know, watching them as a family interact with one another. Um, it still reminded me of how different life was going to be moving forward. And so what I would say for anybody who is going to be alone over Christmas, one of the things that I found was brilliant for me was to get out and move and to embrace, you know, whatever is going on outside. The, the second thing is if somebody asks you or offers you to go to their house or do something, this is not the time that you say no. This is the time that you say yes because they are offering for a reason. And I know every Christmas that we often do that here now is that we know that certain people are going to be alone. So for Christmas dinner, we will invite them over, just, for, you know, ham and salad or whatever. So the other thing is what tends to also fill us up inside is to give to other people so there are possibly other people in need far greater than what we are and so volunteering and helping out you know giving up giving out Christmas hampers all those types of things is something that will certainly I think make you feel a little bit better as well too the other thing to think about is what are the things that you enjoy that you maybe have been putting off. You might have that book that's been sitting on the shelf that you haven't read yet. And so rather than taking the time to feel sorry for yourself, it, see it as the opportunity that it is to get that book out, 
and read it. Or maybe you're someone who keeps looking at everybody's beautiful nails around the place and you're not that way inclined to go to one of those nail bars. But maybe what you might do is just simply sit and paint your fingernails. So there could be countless amounts of things that you could do which are specifically for you. So the, the things I want you to take away from that is to make sure that you spend time with people. Even if you need to reach out on the social media platforms, there are people that are going to respond to you as well too. So just reach out and there'll be, there'll be some giving and loving hands somewhere around the place that will support you as well too. Sal, do you have anything that you wanted to add into that? When you do reach out, don't you, yeah, don't be embarrassed to reach out because there's you'd probably be surprised the amount of people that are by themselves on Christmas Day. So yeah. you may even offer to host Christmas at your house and have everybody bring a plate, put something in the local mm. community page or even in, in the local park, which takes me to yeah. the book idea or and going outside, combine the two. Pack yourself a picnic, go to the beach and read your book and have Christmas picnic mm. or in the park or wherever your favourite place is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and of course, it's not summer everywhere in the world. Um, so mm. we're in Australia, so it will be a different season where you'd be heading into winter, so it could be a little bit cold. So you might find a, yourself a place that's that little bit warmer that you that you want to head to as well too. So, yeah, there, there's... There's quite a number of options there that hopefully will, will help you out as well. The other thing is that you may be in a situation with COVID where you do have to stay in your environment that you, you know, that you are in lockdown. So one of the things you can do is think about hosting a um, Zoom um, Christmas get together with some family and friends so and there's so many things that you can do via technology like that um, and we're currently planning um, an end of year celebration with the strong healthy women community and we are busy packing oh, you can see them let me just move it around oh yeah there's a few boxes over there it just gives you some insight. So we've got a couple of boxes. Well, we've got more than a couple. There's more over the other side as well too. But these boxes are being packed up to um, head off to um, different people. And there's, you know, different things in those boxes. And we're not going to tell you what they are because we want it to be a surprise on the other end for, for our um, girls that are going to be coming for that end-of-year celebration. So you can certainly make it a party even if, it is not in person if it's an electronic get together as well too. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And lots of games totally. You can play, like, play virtually as well. So. Mm. Yeah, that's right. It's just endless, endless. Yes. So one of the things that does happen though when it comes to our health is we let our hair down. We give ourselves permission to, to go that little bit crazy during that holiday season. And that's okay because if you give yourself permission to do that, then just that's what it is. But here's the thing that I want to make sure that you promise yourself is if you've given yourself permission to grow crazy, please don't beat yourself up and feel guilty about it at the end of the day when you're feeling the effects of going crazy. So you don't want that guilt. And if you give yourself permission, that's all okay as well too. So some healthy ideas. I know that we tend to, you know, hit the booze a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to start <laughs> off with booze. <laughs> Alcohol, if you're wondering what that is. Um, so you've probably heard of the one for one deal where you drink one glass of, wa one glass of wine and one glass of water. I'm going to make it harder for you this year. I want you to drink two glasses of water to one glass of alcohol. So two to one. That's going to fill you up. So you're going to be feeling rather full drinking that much water. 
and it's going to slow down that alcohol. You're also, the benefit is that you're not going to feel as dehydrated after a night of hitting the wine or, you know, the scotch or the rum or whatever it is that you like to drink, gin and tonics. This goes on and on and on, really. <laughs> now, the other thing is in regards to alcohol, if you have told yourself you're not going to drink and you've got those friends who go, oh, come on, just have one, go on. And they keep coming back at you all the time and your willpower is starting to disappear really quickly. Then what you might consider doing is just say, oh, sorry, I don't drink anymore. That worked a treat for me. And actually, I don't drink anymore. That's the reality of it. But, you know, it did work really, really well as well. Um, there are other things that you can do, like fill up your wine glass with water. They're not going to know any different. No. Or you could say I'm the designated driver as well too. Yeah. Because they don't want to be responsible for you drinking and driving. So there's a few little options around the wine scenario or the boozing scenario. Okay, so over to you. What hot topic do you want to talk about when it comes to staying super healthy during this holiday season? Your Christmas snacking. Think about all those fresh veged fruits that are coming in. I noticed plums are on the shelf on mm. the weekend. I was in the supermarket and plums are coming in onto the shelves and cherries. So opt for those mm. as your snacks rather than going for mm. the rumbles or the, you know, the, the Christmas lollies or the chocolates, Christmas chocolates not, that might be out. Um, and if you are going to someone else, someone else's house and you do have to take a plate, which often, you know, we all mm -hmm. volunteer to do that sort of thing, take the fruit. Do a platter up with your cherries and your plums and some grapes and watermelon and all those apricots. lovely fresh fruits, apricots, um, mm. knowing that you can graze on those rather than going for the, you know, the, the rumbles and apricot balls and yeah, all those sort of things. Yeah. Um, interesting, self. I don't have a problem with rumbles or apricot balls and all those types of things. Either. They're not, no, they're not my thing. They're definitely not Christmas, my thing. The, Christmas cake, no. The, you see, the one thing that I actually do like is I do like a good fruit cake. So yeah. it doesn't even have to be a Christmas cake. I do like a good fruit cake. So um, that would be the treat. For me, I would definitely have the fruit cake. I don't mind the plum pudding either, um, mm -hmm. but I find them extremely rich, so it would be a very, very small amount of plum pudding. I'm not a pavlova girl. I'm not a trifle girl. Um, and these are all Australian t traditions, if you happen to be chiming in from overseas. Uh, so, and the last thing I could think about is actually having melted chocolate because it is so damn hot here that if yeah. you've got chocolates and all those types of things out, they're just going to be well, just terrible. Yeah. So um, they certainly wouldn't appeal to me unless they're, you know, refrigerated or something like that. So, yeah, the, the snake, snacking is a big thing. One of the tips that I would like to give you around snacking, though, is... And it's a tip that we gave Julie this week because she's heading out to some end of year gatherings and she was concerned and she's in our um, VIP group, the insiders, and she was talking about it and she said, you know, you know what I'm like with those beautiful grazing platters that will be out and everything like that. And um, I said to her, okay, so we know what worked for you last time, Julie. You know what worked for you last time. So remember, it was to keep yourself busy. So, you know, to head to the kitchen and help make the cups of tea for other people, um, to, to have a conversation without putting food in your mouth. So those types of things work really, really well. Um, the other thing is, and, and, and I said 
the visual concept is a really, really um, big rabbit hole we can all fall into because it's just you're looking at it going, come get me, come get me, come eat me. And what you want to do, turn your back. So if you're meeting someone for a coffee at a coffee bar and you know that there's all those beautiful sweeties that are sitting in, in the bar, make sure you sit at a chair where you're not actually looking at them. And I know that's a technique that we've given ladies in the past where they've had lolly jars in their, in their offices. And I go, where's the lolly jar? And it's sitting there right in front of them. And it's like, no, 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 put that lolly jar away. Put it in the drawer somewhere. Because if it's sitting there in front of you, it's going to call you. You're going to give in because we can't. Just at that end of the day, particularly, we just don't have the willpower to say no to it. No, no. And then a little bit further on from that too is if it's um, an at-home gathering, so if you're having a Christmas barbecue, get together with friends, family, whatever it may be, even Christmas Day, um, and, you know, the snacks come out. Mm. Put your chair away from that table. You know, so if you ask, if you're sitting at a table, move your chair behind yeah. everybody. Else. You can still talk, but you don't have that. The, the food isn't within arm's reach. You know, mm. I'll just pick up a grape, I'll pick up, I'll, you know, I'll pick up a fruit, uh, grumble, whatever. And it's not in arm's reach. You physically have to get up and go and get something if you if you did want a snack. Yeah, and, and the other thing about the snacking cell, and, and you and I have both done this uh, recently when we got invited to Betty's 80th birthday celebration. You know, um, it was at, like, 9.30 in the morning or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah. 9.30, 10, something like that? Yeah, something I mean, like that. we've virtually only just eaten breakfast, everybody. You know, yeah. my tummy's, like, full as. I don't have any room for snacking. Um, so I can't comprehend that, you know, that you've eaten breakfast and now, you know, an hour or so later you, you, you're hoeing into something else just because, you know, you're looking at it and you're being tempted by it. So try some of those techniques that we're talking about there earlier. So what's Annette saying to us? Hey, Annette, how are you doing? Homemade Hi, goodies Annette. are my downfall. I can say no to commercial products. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think you need to make a rule, Annette, maybe that um, there's no homemade goodies. It's all got to be commercial products. <laughs> <laughs> if you've just everything chimed in, packet. Annette, we, yeah, everything out of a packet. We've just given a few ideas. So, yeah, take a listen backwards and, and have a look at some of those ideas as well too. I, I want to take it. I think, Annette, it, that would be the only time that we ever uh, gave advice to eat out of a packet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true, because you're not going to eat it, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, eat real food is the motto. Um, I want to take that one step further into, you know, Christmas meals. Um, you know, buffets, not so much. We don't really have to worry about them with COVID. But with Christmas meals, just look at your plate. Um, select the highest quality protein that you can. For example, turkey is a, is a great high-quality protein. So put your turkey on your plate and then fill the rest of it with your veggies. Try and have those veggies being, you know, your actual vegetables as opposed to your starchy veggies. So you might have, a, you know, a little bit of potato, pumpkin, sweet potato, corn, all those types of things, those starchy veggies. So, yeah, by all means have them. But don't fill half your plate with them. Fill half your plate with the other veggies and just make them a the little bit of an add-on and put your cutlery down as you're eating. So in between, chew your mouthful so that you're really, really chewing up your food. Um, the other thing is engage in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll come to that in a sec. So, so just engage in that conversation as well too so rather than trying to eat and talk at the same time in, enjoy the conversation sorry over to you Sel. um drink your water mm. and the other thing i was going to say going back to like uh, i'm using my family as an example so when we have our christmas dinner it's um more often than not it's 
you know, the different meats, chicken, ham, that sort of thing. And then there is the starchy vegetables of potato, sweet potato, corn on the cob, mm. those sort of things. Um, so offer up and make, put your hand up and say, look, I'm going to make some roast vegetables. And so bring those roast vegetables of capsicum and onion and eggplant and all those. All the others. Things. All the others that yeah. you can add in if, if your family is much like mine where it's just the, you know, the, the staple vegetables that are The out. basics. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, good, and some good points there. So, yeah, we, we just want to stay as mindful as we possibly can. And I think I want to move it now. So we've done a little bit of talking about the mind and how we might be alone. We've talked about the, the eating aspect of it, but I do want to move it into the moving part of it as well too. So one of the first things that can happen is that we tend to put that, workout on the back burner and so we'll think about doing all the other things first so I would suggest that you get out your calendar look at your calendar when you're going out what you're doing and then put those workouts in and make sure that they're scheduled in and keep them because they are so, so important from your mental health perspective as well as your physical health perspective. So you want to make sure that they're there. And there's so many extra activities that you can do to keep yourself moving. And I'm going to talk about those in a sec. Sal, do you want to jump in with anything there? Keep moving even on Christmas Day. Don't take Christmas oh, Day totally. off. You know, get up in the morning, keep your schedule on Christmas Day because that will keep that mem momentum going um, into Boxing Day because you've got to remember, you know, we've got Christmas Day off and then it's bo Boxing Day, that public holiday again. So, oh, I might just sleep in today. And then the next day I think is Sunday. Oh, well, Sunday's my rest day. So by the time Monday comes around, it, that's three days. Mm, that we've mm, given, given mm. ourselves permission to take off and then so when yeah when you do come around to that workout it can be a real struggle to kick start it again so don't take Christmas Day off. I'm going to say this I love Christmas morning when it comes to exercise there is not a soul oh, on the yeah, tracks yes yeah. there is not a soul anywhere um, so I've got, you know, if I'm out running, I've got the whole space to myself. If I go for a hike, I've got every trail to myself. Um, yeah, there isn't anybody out, you know, and, and I do get out of bed early. You know, I'm a half past four, quarter to five girl. As soon as the sun's rising, you know, as soon as it's light, I'm, I'm up as well too. So I am out and about very, very early in the morning, but you should try it. It is just, magnificent and the one thing that happens is that if you live in a suburban area I don't but if you do when you are out walking running whatever it is that you're doing you will get the absolute delight and pleasure of hearing every child get up so early yahooing and carrying on about the fact that santa has been so you you know that's just got to put a smile on your face as well too yeah. even you know even mm. a little bit later in the morning walking around my neighborhood and you're seeing you know there might be new bikes or there might be a new trampoline or there might mm. be a new skateboard and yeah so that's wonderful to see as well yeah exactly and then the next thing is that if you happen to be hosting the christmas event then you're probably just madly running around your house cleaning. Um, I'm just going to say this. People aren't coming to your house. They don't really care about whether it's clean or not. And if they do, well, you know, bad luck for them, I say. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that's that's the way I think. <laughs> yeah. So um, they're not there to judge you. They're there to enjoy your company. Um, yeah. So, but... If you are, you know, running around doing that little bit of cleaning, make your cleaning your exercise routine. So as you're dusting, you know, use, you know, your arms, your left, your right, your left, your right, your left, your right, and then do a couple of push-ups in between. 
um, you know, as you're cleaning the toilet, you know, get up and down, do a few squats in it, the same with the shower. So there are a lot of ways that you can incorporate workouts into that cleaning routine as, as well too. So you got anything to add on that? Don't stress. If it's not done, oh, no. if you forget something Christmas Day, if you forget something Christmas Day, reach out to someone. I forgot the napkins. Can you bring the napkins? Because yeah. someone will have someone will have what you need, so don't stress about it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. The other thing is there is no better time than after Christmas lunch to have, you know, a great big drink of water. So everybody say, okay, let's have a competition. Who can finish this bottle of water first, you know? So make it a bit of fun and then just say, okay, let's go. We're heading out for a walk now or uh, let's go to the park and, and ride those bikes around. So, or we might go and play soccer or play cricket or so there are a lot of activities that you can do with your family. The family is going to love that as well too. Maybe not all of them, but the, the smaller ones will. will. Yeah, the smaller <laughs> ones definitely will. <laughs> not Maybe not the older ones. So, no. but anyway. So there, there's a lot of tips in that. I mean, we could sit here and, and talk for another half an hour, but we won't do that. Uh, what we wanted to do today was sort of like give you some ideas about you know, surviving the, the silly season and having a healthier holiday time, holiday season, so that you don't get at the end of this holiday time and go, oh, no, you know, now I have to start all over again because I've completely destroyed everything that I've done during 2020. So, And we don't want that for you. So yeah. thanks for joining me today, Sel. Thank you for having me, as always. Yeah, thank my pleasure. It was a yeah, thank you for being here, Annette. It was a, um, an interesting topic. So yeah. all right, ladies, yeah, over and out from us. Down. Yeah, we do. Yeah, and I don't know why, <laughs> but we do. <laughs> All right. So over and out from us. Take care, everybody, and we shall see you on Wednesday. See you Bye. soon. See you, Sal. Bye. Bye, Bye. Peter. Bye, everyone. Bye.